As established in the previous part, when the last say is on case by one student, so now the time their scores are lower than no right to point to eight marks. So if class say is decreased by uh, if class say decreases by five people, then we just do two right to eight times five, which means that average uh, their score will go down by ten point two marks.
This area, the sum of both areas will be in the zero point zero one six. Zero point zero one six. Ah, but it's more like zero point zero one six. Well, so I think since the value is less than zero point zero five, we can also reject H naught. Ah, okay. So for the last part, we just have to find the modulus of the voice. Basically, just your Plus minus uh, one point nine six times two point seven. Yeah, so you can just you get the range is between <coughs> negative three point six nine one two and negative zero point eight six eight eight. So since uh beta one is equal to zero, does not lie between does not lie inside this confidence interval. You reject the question. Hypothesis rejected at the point one percent level. Zero point one percent. You can also think of this question: Is the null hypothesis rejected? At zero point one percent level. You can't reject because the the p value is higher than zero point zero zero one. So if I want to use the Critical values to answer this question. What should you do?
<laughs> so now let me make some comments on the, on, on the mistakes that you made in your submission. I think most of you are able to do the hypothesis test, but for the interpretation, so many of, them, many of you made a mistake. So the question interprets the coefficients. It means just interpret the values within the values given in the estimation result. And there are two coefficients estimated, the slope and the intercept. So you need to interpret these two estimated values one by one. For the slope, so your answer must include the keyword expected or on average. And for the intercept, you need to see whether this value has economic limit or whether the CS equal to zero is within the data link. If the interpretation of the intercept doesn't make sense, like in this question, the average score, test score, is predicted as this value when the class size is zero. So when the class size is zero, there's no student. So this is why the estimated intercept doesn't have, has economic meaning. And for the hypothesis test, so we learned that when the sample size is small, we will check the student T distribution. With the degrees of freedom, M minus two. It is actually M minus one minus one. The first one is the slope. The second one is the intercept. And when N is large, the T statistic is approximately standard normal. I use approximately because only when N goes to infinity, they are exactly the same. So this is a approximated result. <laughs> And we use this, uh, uh, we will apply this as a practical implementation. This is what we do in practice. But theoretically, so if all the assumptions are satisfied, or all the assumptions are made, the T statistics follows the student T distribution, just with a large degrees of freedom. So if you didn't use the standard normal distribu distribution, but you used the T distribution with the degrees of freedom, two for zero minus two, that is two, one, eight. It is correct. So if you follow the student T distribution, then you should use the student T distribution for 
questions C, D, and E. So when you find the P values, you, you should also use the student P field. And you will use this critical value in calculating the confidence interval. extension about this question. Please redo parts C, D, E for this hypothesis test. I want to know if beta 1 is different from minus 1 or not.
please check your answers with your group members. And if any group is ready, yeah, please try to share your answer on board.
was it presented with me? Or she accidentally met me? Tell her later. But too late now. I don't know. I don't know. for practice. So we will start with a typical question and extend it to multiple situations. Then, then all of you should be able to do this type of question in so many scenarios. So before moving to today's topic, let's briefly review what we have learned in the past two weeks. Two, we, we built up a linear regression model with one regressor x. So in this model, y is the, the dependent variable, x is the independent variable. And the 